We return to the Egyptian Heaven and Hell by E. A. Wallace Budge, Volume Two, the short form of the book Gimduat and the Book of Gates. Chapter Seven: The Judgment Hall of Osiris. Who is Osiris to judge us, anyways? But um, here we go. The boat of Ra, having passed through the fifth division of the Duat, arrives at the gateway which leads to the sixth division. R is the gates. R is the text says, This entity cometh forth through this pylon, and he passes then through it, and these entities who are in the secret place acclaim him. The gateway is guarded by the twelve bearded mummy forms who are in this pylon. And it is called Nebet Aha Oh, they forgot Rai. The gates which admit to the sixth division resemble those already described. Oh, the those in the pylon are the true Nitrit. So, a lot of the, and this goes on into the later Semitic languages, a T or an H sort of thing at the end can indicate the feminine form. Or an E versus an U. But some of that varies. The gate which admits to the sixth division of twelve resembles those already described. At the entrance to the corridor, and at its exit stands a bearded mummified form, the former being called Ma'ayib, and the later Shatayib. Eh. These names mean right of heart and hidden of heart, respectively. And each is said to extend his hands and arms to Ra. And if we compare Ra to Utu, we may have some correlations to consider. So that's the judgment hall we're looking at. And the gate of the serpent the moth. Okay. Sit. Oh. Where, where's 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 its name? But instead of another serpent going up like this, we have steps one to three, one to three, one to three, an aniad, and then the guy with the with the with the scales. The, the bird and the scale versus an empty is sort of hanging off the edge there, but it's even at that point. Um, so Osiris is replacing the snake in that one. The corridor is swept by flames. The entities who exclaim that entity say, Come thou to us, O thou who art to the head of the horizon, O great entity who dost open the hidden place, open the holy doors and unfold the portals of the hidden palace. The nine being the nine gates. The nine gates of ourselves. On one end we got the mouth, the other end we got the anus. We have the we have the eye holes, the nose holes, the ear holes, and the genital hole. And so, the nine gateways explained. Between the gate, which leads to the sixth division of twelve, and the division itself, we find inscribed a remarkable scene, which may be thus described. In the upper part from one side to another, a line is drawn which is intended to represent the roof of the shrine or canopy in which the entity is seated, and upon it rests a row 
of Chikuru. The spear-headed ornaments from inside of the roof hang upside down, four heads, some kind of horned animal. These are called ha ha sa -i. Remember, sa -i is wise. The S in Sabnu is, that's, that's the word we have here. The little chick with the, uh, not, not the chick, the, the duck with its, with the reeds. Ooh. Ha ha sa -i ooh. And are supposed to be heads of gazelles or oxen. And the space in between the spear-headed ornaments and the side of the duat is written. Oh, I don't even, that's, that's a difficult one. The translation of these characters between uh, appear to be Sir Her Duat Sat Chun U. The meaning of this first three words is tolerably clear. Yes, your governor of the Duat. You know, Osiris. But the signification of the last signs is doubtful. M. Lefebvre translates the inscription Osiris, master of Hades, Earth, and Penen. Osiris, who wears the double crown of the south and north, and holds in his right hand the scepter of life, and his left a scepter. You know, the typical shepherd, shepherd crook, not the ust. Uh, the Uther, um, is seated on a chair of state, which is set on top of a platform with nine steps. On each step stands an entity, and the nine entities are described as the company, which is with Sar. Oh, Sar. You know, Osiris, but Osiris with an egg, so, um... What's that mean to you? On the topmost step is a balance in which the actions of the deceased are weighed. You know, the the mental soul, the Ba, I think is the bird. Um, the beam of the balance is supported by either, either by the deceased or by, by a stand which is made in the form of a bearded mummy. Because when, when these illusions that we have programmed and others have programmed into our into our physical body, you know, our mind and all that, when that goes, we're going to know our judgment for ourselves. So we'll hold the book, we'll hold the scales, you know. One pan of the balance contains some rectangular object and the other figure and the other, a figure of the bird, which is symbolic of evil and wickedness. Oh, well. I knew it didn't quite look like the ba. Our ba. Behind the balance is a boat, which is sailing away from the presence of Yasir. In it is a pig being driven along by a dog-headed ape, which flourishes a stick. In the top-hand corner is a figure of Anubis, jackal-headed, and under the floor of the platform, in which Yusfur is seated, the figures of the enemy of Sar, or, Os or Osiris, from the variant of the scene which is found in the sarcophagus of... of... Chahre at Paris, and as well as the sarcophagus of Seti I, we may see that the pig in the boat is... Um, uh, which means the eater of arms, and the boat is piloted by a second ape, which stands in the bows. On the Paris monument, we see a man wielding a hatchet in a threatening manner and standing near the scales, probably with the view of destroying the deceased if the judgment of Yasir prove averse to him. Now, remember the demonic animals of the donkey, the pig, and the ape. 
and in other societies, it would be the uh, the rooster, the crow, and the dog. Well, I mean, uh, the, the rooster, the snake, and the dog, symbolizing our uh, the demonic natures. <clears throat> and as we go up the chakras or the sephirot or whatever, we're, you know, different animals we're working through. The Egyptians have some of that going on and how they're explaining things. The nine short lines of text at the foot of the scene read, well, there's only the snake in this one, but this inscription was called the, the inscription in which the so-called enigmatic writing, oh, it's in the enigmatic writing, a fact which is noticed by Champollion, but a transcript of it exists on the sarcophagus of Chipre in characters which we have ordinary values, and the text reads as... And before we go and uh, share of that text, we have C. Goodwin, Aig, Zeit, 1873, page 138, Renouf, Ibn, 1874, page 101, and Champollion Monuments, Bill, oh, Plate, 272. The Fibur renders, O oh, ye who bring the word just or false to me, he thoth examines the words, Jahote. I have explained more in the political list as an example to replace the alt-right or, you know, the to offer an alternative to that. That's one of the things I've done with my political list is replace the left, replace the right, replace the middle, and I guess the uh, something else is to follow, which if you don't know, it's... Anyways. And that text renders, His enemies are under his feet. The entities and the spirits are before him. Oh, his entities are his entities are under his feet. The demons and the spirits are before him. He is the enemy of the dead among the beings of the Duat. Yes, your putteth his restraint on his enemies. He destroyeth them and he performeth the slaughter of him. Say, yes, your is sort of a usurper sort of entity, or at least he claims to be. Kind of like uh, the idea of Jesus went into hell and came back and did, you know, well, who was in charge of hell and the souls and stuff in the first place, but the text which refers to Anubis, Yin, Yinpu, Yinpu, is that how you say his name? Um, and thus Mr. Goodwin transcribed, Hail, O ye who make to be mot, the word of your little one, may thoth weigh the words, may he make to eat his father. Sort of what they're doing in the sacrament, you know, sort of the father meal, you know, um, which is the son and all that. Um, immediately over the both is a short transcription. This Goodwin renders by... When this entity endureth, he riseth and putteth under restraint. And, oh, ama. So, yage nature pun. Oh, I don't remember. Fun and ama, something ama. Um, the bull. Not a very fierce-looking bull, but it was a bull nonetheless. Behind the pair of scales is the following legend, and Mr. Goodwin transcribes it by, The balance-bearer does homage. The blessed spirits in Yemenita follow after him. The morning star disperses the thick darkness, and there is good will above, justice below. The entity reposes himself. He gives bread to the blessed who throng towards him. And remember, Lucifer, the morning star. So. But also the light bringer as a role that we're supposed to take on. We can look at that. 
The translation by M. Lefebvre reads, The bearer, the hatcher, and the bearer, the scales, protect the inhabitants of Yemenite, takes his repose in Hades and transverses the darkness and the shadows, happiness is above and justice below, the entity reposes and sheds light, produces by truth which he hath produced. The upper part of the space between the roof and the platform on which Yasir sits is occupied by two short inscriptions which are full of difficulty. They read, and there is a meaning of the text which puzzles several workers, even the order in which the characters are to be read has given rise to difference of opinion. You know, if it faces you, you kind of read that way. But if it faces the other way, you read that way. It's it's not too hard. Um, one of the chief difficulties in the matter is caused by the way in which the two legends are written on the sarcophagus of Seti I. Looking at the hieroglyphs as they stand, they seem to form a continuous inscription. But if we examine the scene as it appears in the tomb of Ramses II, we see that it must divide them as above. Mr. Goodwin made an attempt to transcribe and translate a part of the text, but as he considered them to form only one inscription, we cannot accept his rendering. Mr. Lefebvre has made a translation of both texts, and they read, and remember, with virtually every spiritual path, and that includes the path of, the, of whatever dynasty of the Egyptians, things change per noble. Things were different. Uh, things, you know, you never knew when things were going to be, things were always different per king, but per noble, another rich person who could afford such things, you know the uh, what they wrote down in the tombs and the and the and the scrolls to go with you when you died and the rituals they performed on your behalf. Some of that, a lot of that, there was a lot of variation in that. So this very they who hide those which are in the state of the elect, they the country to them is am in the land. Behold, these are they whose heads issue. What a mystery is their appearance of your images. The examination of the words that takes... Oh. The examination of the words takes place, and he strikes down the wickedness. He who has a just heart, he who bears the words and the scales and the divine place of the examination of the mystery of mysteries of spirits... The entity who rises, who has made his infernal all. So, obviously, we're dealing with the interactions of demons. Sheatin Minaljin. Feel Janut. I said Janut. Right. Um, for the purposes of comparison... The versions of the text from the tomb of Ramses VI, as given by Champollion, are given. It will be noted that a part of the line immediately over the head of Yusur is given in different places in the later scene for... Oh, tell us who that is. God. Oh, okay, how do, how do you... How... Let me figure out how to pronounce that. Is given in different. Uh, um, is immediately to follow. Is immediately to follow in front of the double crown of Yasser. So what is that character? Oh, I can't. I don't remember how to pronounce that. You know, it's like the letter for the T with the th over it. Um, hard Z, S H T J, and something in the U is immediately followed in front of the double crown of Yasur and Natanu, and is immediately in front of the scepter of the entity. And the other line reads, and that comes to the. Ec uh, we look at Records of the Past, Volume 10, page 114, but think about it. Mr. Goose flying there. You know, 
perfect letter for that sound, right? That hard. See. Um, Sharma, peace be upon you.